This was a 500cc Royal Enfield bullet engine which has actually been enlarged to 535cc. Um, that's beside the point for what I'm doing here. I just thought that I'd uh, demonstrate the retarding of the inlet cam timing which on some engines I've worked on has been a real benefit and it's quite easy to do. You don't need any degree discs or um, you don't even need to use a plunger to find top dead centre or anything, although it does help if you've got the engine somewhere near top dead centre so that the timing marks are in the zone and the weight's off the camshafts. And basically all you have to do is you pull the inlet cam out and you rotate it anti-clockwise by one tooth. Like that. That's retarded the inlet cam timing. Um, all you have to do, obviously, is take the timing cover off. In some cases, the exhaust pipe has to come off to give you access to do it. Timing cover off. Do that. Put it all back on. Try it. You won't get in any trouble with the valves and the piston because that actually moves the inlet valve further away from the piston in any case. But you must remember to rotate the cam anti-clockwise and it's one tooth, which is equivalent to a whopping great 18 degrees, believe it or not. But it can and often does improve things. At the very worst it won't improve things um, it certainly won't do any damage to your engine and <clears throat> if you prefer it as it was before just simply repeat the process turn the cam back again one tooth in a clockwise direction and you're back where you started. Interestingly enough somebody marked these timing gears with red some marking paint and if we look at it it would appear and see that we've got the dots lined up there now between the exhaust cam and the inlet cam but it would appear that the paint marks would suggest that the inlet cam has been run advanced by one tooth which certainly is counterproductive to uh, the engine producing useful power and revs so my guess is perhaps this engine hasn't been uh, a very good performer in the past if it was timed like that. While you're um, doing this it's worth keeping an eye on the ignition timing. I mean it didn't move there for me uh, but just as a little bit of a backup you might be able to see I've marked the position of this one at top dead centre so that if I did lose the timing it'd be easy for me to find it again. Um, another thing worth noting is that for those who might like to fit electronic ignitions to these engines I don't really go with it much myself except if it's off the crankshaft because when you've got an electronic ignition in the distributor okay you might not have to worry about looking after a set of points anymore which is actually what we've got in there but even with the top notch electronic ignition unit in there You've still got all that backlash and I once put a strobe on a running engine that was fitted with a magneto driven like this and at a steady 4000 revs I was getting a variation of 11 degrees on the ignition timing because you've got the amount of degrees that's moving there on this particular case times two for what's actually happening at the crankshaft so quite a scope for a variation in ignition time in there so <clears throat> you know the, the electronic ignition is theoretically a good thing to have but it's not going to compensate for this and the bullet engine really is quite a low revenue unit anyway so even if you had it doing 7,000 revs your distributor shaft would only be spinning at three and a half thousand revs when you consider that some points on two-stroke engines are going at crankshaft speeds um, when you think of the old Suzuki Super 6s and so on you'd be looking at seven and a half eight thousand open and closes per minute which you're only really seeing just over half of that on these at, at most so uh, yeah debatable that one but my road going bullets have all got points in their distributors and uh, quite a few of the engines I've built and tuned have got the inlet cam retarded by one tooth. So 
is it worth a try? Well, it's not hard to do. Um, if curiosity gets the better of you, have a go. Just be ready to catch some oil that might come out. Um, try not to let the ignition timing slip. Mark it off before you start if you've got any doubts. And give it a whirl. You just might be pleasantly surprised. In a lot of cases I have been.